Welcome back everyone. Today, we're diving deep into a question that has puzzled theologians, historians and believers for centuries. Who is the real Jesus? Christians believe Jesus was divine, the Son of God. But what if I told you that the earliest followers of Jesus didn't believe this? What if the Islamic view of Jesus as a prophet aligns more closely with historical fact? Let's start by laying the historical groundwork with the help of renowned scholar Dr. James Tabor. Dr. Tabor, a respected historian on Christian origins, argues that Jesus' earliest followers didn't view him as divine. In fact, the Gospel of Mark, our earliest source, makes no mention of a virgin birth or post-resurrection appearances. It's almost as if these critical elements of Jesus' divinity were added later. Just imagine standing on the mountainside with Jesus, hearing his message of compassion and humility, a message of submission to God's will, not about claiming divinity. Now let's shift gears and look at why Judaism never accepted Jesus as divine with insights from Rabbi Tovia Singer. Rabbi Tovia Singer explains that from a Jewish perspective, the Messiah was never meant to be divine. The Hebrew Bible speaks of the Messiah as a human leader who would bring peace, not someone to be worshipped. The idea of a divine Messiah is a foreign concept to Judaism. God is one with no partners, says Rabbi Singer. This is affirmed by the Shema, a core Jewish prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But what about Paul's letters, which declared Jesus as divine? Paul, as Dr. Tabor explains, wasn't reflecting the beliefs of Jesus' immediate followers. He was innovating, creating a theology that developed over time, diverging from the original message. Now, let's turn to the Islamic perspective which honors Jesus as a prophet, aligning closely with what history suggests. In Islam, Jesus, Isa in Arabic, is revered as one of God's greatest messengers. The Quran describes him as a servant of God, a prophet who preached monotheism and submission to the one God. This mirrors the earliest Christian view before theological developments muddied the waters. The Quran says in Surah 4, 171, Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of God. So believe in God and his messengers and do not say three. Muslims don't see Jesus as a figure trapped in theological debates. They see him as a man who taught compassion, love and submission to God. Just imagine if we could strip away centuries of debate. Would we find a simpler, unified message of Jesus as a prophet of God? So why does any of this matter? Because understanding Jesus as a prophet, not a divine being, impacts how we connect with God today. The Islamic view returns us to a pure monotheism, where God alone is worthy of worship. This contrasts with the later developments in Christian theology, where Jesus was elevated to divine status. Some may argue that Jesus' resurrection proves his divinity, but as Dr. Tabor highlights, the earliest gospel, Mark, contains no resurrection sightings, and Paul's vision of Jesus was a spiritual experience, not a bodily resurrection. It's almost like playing a game of theological telephone. What starts as one clear message ends up wildly distorted by the time you get to the end. So, if we want to honour Jesus, perhaps the best way is to see him as he was. A servant of God, a prophet who called people to worship the one creator. In that, we find unity across faiths and a deeper connection to God himself. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more content that explores faith, history and truth. And don't forget to share this with someone who could benefit from a fresh perspective on who Jesus really was.